Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. All right, guys. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to uh, our first installment, okay, our first installment of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend uh, breakfast show where there's actually no breakfast. There actually is no show. Uh, unfortunately, you are here again with me uh, because uh, five days a week, seven hours a day is not enough for hearing me speak or uh, rant about the market or talk about the market and all that good stuff. So thank you very much for those of you guys who came out. Thank you very much uh, for all you guys who are at home sleeping. I probably don't fault you. All right, guys. So let's uh, let's get into uh, the market really, really quickly. Uh, again, we're going to break this down in several installments. We're going to go through what happened yesterday in the day. Uh, then our first installment is going to be showing everybody how to, well, at least how I uh, structure my uh, actionable trading list. There's no such thing as a watch list anymore. Uh, trading list for the next day. In the last uh, 20, 30 minutes, uh, like 20 minutes or so, we will get as many questions uh, as answered as possible. And then I promise to you, you, you're allowed to leave and you're allowed to go uh, about your uh, day. So uh, let's kind of uh, get started. Uh, again, markets, you know, again, just kind of summarize it. Uh, again, don't think for a second. And, and again, I, I, don't, I don't talk about fantasy world, okay? Uh, you guys know this, I, I don't talk about fantasy world. Uh, there is no fluffing, there is no ego stroking. I, I talk about reality, okay? Um, don't think for a second, okay, that the, this bull run is, uh, is anything that you are controlling, okay? Uh, the market's very, very strong, yes. Um, I've traded in the most historic bull market ever, and it only lasted about 18 to 20 months, which is dot com. And believe me when I tell you, there were no superheroes then. There were, the streets were not paid with gold. Yes, the, 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 you know, the results were great. Everybody did great. Everybody, you know, but not everybody did great. Okay. And the most important part with this new market structure right now is the ability to understand the difference between a good structural market or a market that is, uh, you know, or a market that you're getting lucky. And again, the one thing we always talk about in the room, don't think for a second that the market is as good uh, or as bad as you possibly think. Uh, the market trades in intervals. There is such thing as a bull market, which we're in right now. There is such thing as a, in a bear market, which is kind of great as well after you a certain, have a certain amount of years into the game. Because again, uh, again, the old adage goes, stocks take the stairs up and they take the elevator down, which is very, very true. And there's something called the, you know, dis the distribution market, which uh, the bulls and the bears kind of sit there in a the phone booth and you know, hit themselves in, with, with, in the head with a, with a pillow. Obviously, no, nobody doing any single damage. Uh, the only person who wins there uh, is the broker. So, you know, this market run has been, you know, has been good. I mean, this, the, the, you know, the, the market's action has been phenomenal. Um, I don't think, you know, I don't think uh, this market compares at all to the dot-com era as we kind of discussed uh, in the room many, many times. Uh, here you have, you know, random thin low float names that have one or two day runs, which is great, phenomenal. If that's your game, it's not my game. I don't care about it. I don't feel like waking up in the morning looking at the pre-market list that's up, uh, you know, something that's up 250% trying to make 10 cents out of it. It's just kind of not my thing. After eating uh, in a steakhouse and you order the porterhouse, the last thing you want to do is kind of go underneath the table and try to lick up all the crumbs. There's nothing left. There's no meat left on that bone. Uh, what we do here is completely different. Um, I have a very, very specific uh, methodology and process that I trade that nobody else on this planet trades because, well, uh, again, I am the idiot who made up this process three years ago uh, and it works very, very well. Uh, as you guys in the room uh, will know. So let's quickly get into uh, this week, this past week of trading, yesterday's uh, pivots, and then we'll go into the structural side of how to create, or at least how that I create, uh, an actionable uh, trading, uh, trading uh, bias, a watch list, quote unquote, uh, that many people call it uh, for the next day. So let's quick, quickly review uh, the, the week. Uh, I, I think, honestly, top three weeks, um, you know, top three weeks of... Uh, trading uh, this year, I, I really do. Uh, I, I know any time again for all you guys at home on social media who, who don't know who the hell I am. I, I trade primarily beta, uh, and beta was absolutely out of its mind this week. Uh, again, if you look at just the indexes, again, if you care about the scoreboard, yes, they all broke out: the S and P, the Nasdaq 100. 
Um, the doubt, the diamonds broke out. Everything, everything broke out, right? Every single group broke out. Uh, but the bottom line is, again, I don't care what the market does. It's, again, as we say all the time, how much value uh, can I get in the market? And usually if the market goes up 200 points, okay, cool. If the market goes down 200 points, okay, cool. But again, how much value is there for me? How much structure is there for me? And how much risk do I have to put on the table with risk on compared to uh, the reward that I can get? And uh, this week was, was really good. I mean, it's, it's very, very hard to... To sugarcoat it, I mean, you guys saw, um, you know, just saw what I did, you know, what I did this week uh, with runners and everything between Googles and Amazons and Teslas. I mean, I didn't look at my sheets, but, you know, we're talking about north of, it has to be north of 15, 16 points. Um, just on Friday, um, just on Friday, I caught a, you know, four, another $4 runner on Google. So it was really good. It was a really, really good week. But again, there's nothing structurally that I did different uh, that I trade in the distribution market that I would trade in a bull market or a bear market. It just, the, the range is expanded. And that's the whole name of the game. The range is expanded. They built properly for, you know, 95%. Uh, of the week um, and the trades that I believe uh, didn't build right away I, th I thought I, I traded them well I used break-even trades where they didn't go um, you know so I, you know I think we did a great job this week you know I got a lot of great uh, feedback you know Charlie I, right Charlie I think Charlie said his, his biggest week uh, of the year uh, right I mean biggest week of the year I mean this so I mean, listen it, it, I've got a lot of that man I really got a lot of that. Um, I can't even see your responses. Yeah, there you are. Right, Charlie? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I got a lot of responses to that. I know a lot of people, especially uh, who traded you know, on the option side or traded for the bigger moves, um, you know, did very, very well. So let's kind of quickly go through uh, yesterday's day and then we'll get to the meat and potatoes of of what we did, uh, of you know, what I look for uh, in the market structure for our next uh, trading day. So, uh, for all you guys at home, we uh, our email is broken down into uh, several parts. Uh, one is the nightly video, two is the option uh, flow report, um, and number three is the webinar, the live webinar recording. The live webinar recording uh, is all six and a half, seven hours of the day. Uh, which starts with uh, morning strategy and in morning strategy the first 20 minutes we highlight uh, all the potential pivots we, we highlight all the potential moves uh, that the market could give us with uh, defined risk again uh, you know I don't trade uh, I trade primarily 90 95 percent of beta names so everything else I just don't care about it's just not my thing uh, beta is great because I could get instant gratification uh, it's depending on liquidity if I could get full size uh, and the moves are fair, you know, pretty fast and pretty uh, aggressive. So Friday, if you notice, if you uh, after you guys watch this, uh, scroll down to the webinar recording, and you will see the first 20 minutes of morning strategy. And we highlighted morning strategy. Uh, we, we, you know, we didn't get creative. You know, we didn't get creative the previous night. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, Nvidia, Google, Tesla, Amazon, uh, Netflix, right? I mean, we we basically covered the beta names. Usually, I don't. Usually, I put other names. Uh, on the trading, you know, trading platform for from the night's uh, due diligence, but you know, you, sometimes you don't want to get creative. Uh, you want to look at the alpha that is potentially right in front of you, uh, and if those are the strongest stocks, why look for some stock that you have never heard of? You don't know the market structure of that name. You don't know the organic order flow. You don't know how much size you can take in that name. You don't have any familiarity with that stock, so why trade it, right? Why trade it? I know if Google builds, it's going to go. I know if Nvidia builds. Is going to go. I know if Tesla builds is going to go. So why get creative, right? Keep it simple, stupid, right? Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. And that and I, since I am the king of the idiots, and there's no bigger stupidity for me, I try to keep things uh, very, very uh, simple. So let's start out. You know, let's start out quickly. Review of yesterday's session. It was Friday, and there's again, there's a, there's a whole myth, right? There's a whole myth on Fridays, uh, and a lot of people say the same thing. Like for me, by the time Friday rolls around, you guys kind of see this. Thursday afternoon. I'm exhausted. Again, what you see me doing now, you know, I speak for seven hours a day, five days a week, and I speak to all you guys uh, after the close, and then I structure the, you know, this, uh, the, the trading uh, uh, sentiment for the next day, and plus I, you know, I wear a bunch of other hats throughout the day, so it's, it's, um, you know, it, it's a lot on me. So by the time Thursday rolls around, I'm exhausted. So for me, Fridays are almost like, I wouldn't call it a vacation day, but I'm not trying to recreate the wheel on Friday. And I believe it was, it was uh, either, um, I think it was Talgut who said, I, I, either Talgut or Ralph, somebody said that they believe that Friday was probably the one day 
that many traders have uh, the least amount of success. And, and again, I, my, my answer to that was, my, actually my response to that was, you know, maybe in the old structure, okay, maybe in the old structure uh, years ago, but again, nothing is new. I mean, nothing's the same anymore. I mean, nothing is the same anymore. Uh, it, it's a completely different market. It, it's all, it's all process specific. It's all market specific. It's all stock specific. So I think it's one of those scenarios that you can kind of put to bed, you know, old, old school rest that, you know, Mondays are better than Fridays. Fridays are better than Tuesdays. It, it's all about individual uh, setups and an individual market interval. So um, I think that's that. But, you know, to my, you know, to my, uh, to my point, I, I do get tired on Friday. So my activity for Friday's session is a little bit less because I'm just so tired. Uh, but again, if you listen to Morning Strategy, we, we highlighted exactly what I thought was gonna happen, and it kind of played out perfectly. So we talked about, and this is kind of how we uh, started the day. So here is the 60 minute view, right? So here is the 60 minute view of the market. Uh, let's get rid of all this. Let's get rid of that first candle. So we knew the previous day, Amazon was strong, Google was strong, uh, Tesla was gonna be strong, uh, Netflix was gonna be strong, so in the video, all these stocks. So we wanted to make sure if there was any gonna be value and there's gonna be a lot of aggressive uh, market, especially option players. And again, I'm not an options guy, but I'm not stupid. I understand a lot of the flow uh, will make these stocks move. A lot of the sweeps will, will get these stocks going. So we knew Friday was gonna be traditionally an area where more aggressive speculation in the options market was gonna take place with sweeps and probably gonna, you know, in Facebook and you know, in Amazon and Google. And it was a monster bet uh, earlier in the week, uh, nine million dollar bet on the 970 calls on Amazon, which really uh, set that thing on fire. But uh, we kind of knew that all the speculation money, especially in the uptrending market, was going to occur on a Friday. So a dip buy after a breakout and all the indexes made sense. So here's a 60 minute view on Amazon. Okay, here's a 60 minute view. Uh, we knew this was going to be support right here. We knew this was going to be support right here. Uh, actually, excuse me, right here. Sorry about that. Uh, I knew this would be support right around here. I was bidding for the stock, and this is this is the one trade that if I caught, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't, I was bidding for the stock 974 and a half. Okay, 974 and a half at the bottom of this channel. Again, you could go through uh, the, the morning video from Friday. You'll see this after you're done watching this. And the stock traded 80 cents away from my bid, and all it did was on the first candle was run up $10. Uh, I know a lot of you guys uh, did catch the trade. Unfortunately, I wasn't one of them, and I was livid. You guys saw I was livid. Um, you know, again, for me, if I you know if I lose money on a trade, I'm okay. If I miss an opportunity that I know I should have had, uh, it really sits with me. So it really took a turn for me mentally. I was like, all right, this is Friday. I'm not going to do a lot. I really missed this. You know, it is what it is. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who did catch Netflix. This was awesome. I mean, this was a really, really big uh, aggressive trade. Again, the same thing. This is the rising support. Okay. Again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from support to support, well, here's is support to support. And Netflix, we talked about uh, 182 to 182.30 bounce potential. And that boy, that bad boy bounced. I mean, this thing really, really bounced. A very, very aggressive move. Again, there's so much speculation with Netflix. We kind of knew about that. Friday, everybody is jumping on because they believe this is the week that they're finally going to get taken over. Uh, again, I personally think, and you guys kind of know this, that uh, you know, I, I think Netflix is going to get taken out within the next uh, two, two and a half years. Again, there's too much value there for an Apple, uh, Google, Amazon, Hulu. Uh, Disney, somebody to buy them uh, to put into their stable with their uh, original content. And I believe, if the exception of ESPN, uh, I believe Netflix putting out the most original uh, content, spending about $6 billion uh, for that. So the infrastructure is there for them to get uh, swept up. So this, you know, the stock has been a beast. Again, congratulations for all you guys who did uh, catch that move from that 182, 182.30. Uh, big, big move. I mean, big, big move. The average true range on, um, on uh, Netflix on a 60-minute bounce is usually about 40 cents. And you guys kind of see that from the pivots, 40 cents, this one went up. I mean, just the initial move was about two and a half dollars. Very, very big moves, congratulations there. Uh, Google, uh, Google. I mean, we'll talk about Google in a second on my second entry. The first entry, again, same thing. It bounced right off support, you know, perfectly right off support. Uh, I know Ken caught it for like two, three dollars. I know Charlie caught, right Charlie? I think you caught um, Google like three times on Friday. 
Um, just, just, just a really, really big move. I, I knew this thing was going to go red to green. Once you saw that initial candle on Amazon, we knew, you know, we knew that Google was going to go red to green. We'll talk about uh, the second entry, but that first move was really, really solid there as well. So the bounces played very, very well uh, in the morning, uh, and and here's some of the, you know, here's some of the other plays. So uh, again, I, I wasn't as I wasn't planning to be as aggressive. Uh, as I was on uh, throughout the week, I was just tired, and I said, you know what? Let me just see what I can get. If I can get something, that's great. If not, no big deal. I had a you know pretty solid week. There's no reason for me to uh, try to you know try to you know cre recreate the Mona Lisa here. So my first trade of the day was uh, Alibaba, and I was like, you know, I was already pissed off. Uh, I was already pissed off about uh, missing uh, that Amazon bounce, so I was like, all right, you know, let me let me watch this Alibaba. If it gets through the 79 level, maybe this thing could finally go. Well, yeah, that, yeah it kind of happened and it kind of didn't. Uh, the one thing, you know, the one thing that I do know, um, these stocks are going to give us, uh, these stocks are going to give us the biggest value uh, on the whole numbers that will bring in the most liquidity. And the most important part of that liquidity is, well, I could take some size there. So uh, I bought the stock at 79. It built perfectly within that first minute. Um, it, you know, built perfectly within that first minute. The stock started going. The problem is, again, problem is it hit this linear regression line and the problem is the stock only went up like 22 cents that's it uh, unfortunately it went up 22 cents and the one thing that we always talk about you know trades we, we don't want to magnify a trade okay we don't want to do anything crazy to magnify a trade not every single trade needs to be a nine run home run I, I thought the stock had a chance to get to this 45 50 cent level and maybe at that point I would have sold some stock and kept the runner for a possible move to supply it just never happened um, and one, it, once it got rejected off the supply zone, it came right back in. I literally made a cup of coffee. Again, I don't believe in, in the theory of let the stock come against you and start dying. Um, you know, I don't believe that. I always think you could always buy back the stock at the highest level after another confirmation. So I literally made nothing on the trade. Uh, my second trade, um, let me just show you guys. Uh, my second trade, and I posted this on our Facebook page, um, uh, my second trade uh, was this NVIDIA. Uh, again, not a big move. At, again, I just couldn't, the first couple of parts of the day, I, I just couldn't get going. You know what I mean? I just couldn't get going. And I was like, all right, let me just forget about it. It's just the market's just very, very slow right now, whatever. And then the market took off. And then the market took off. So I made, you know, I made a little bit of money on NVIDIA. Again, just couldn't get that big move. Like Alibaba and NVIDIA just couldn't get going. You know, they just couldn't get going. Apple couldn't get going the whole week. Um, so it was all about like Amazon and Google. So Amazon woke up, put up that big candle, and you know, and then I started looking at Google. And we kind of knew Google was gonna go. Um, you know, we kind of knew Google was gonna go. And the reason why we knew Google was gonna go is well, Amazon exploded. So here was the channel. You know, here was the channel that we were looking at right over here, this uh, 98.50 level. And we kept on saying it's gonna build. It's gonna build once it starts building. And when you're trading like a Google. And when you're trading like an Amazon, you know, stocks that are, have wider spreads, okay, stocks that have wider spreads, obviously bigger point potential, but have wider spreads, they're harder to judge when they're building, okay, off that pivot. So it's more important to get into the trade on a volume surge based on based on live bidders, aggressive bidders over that pivot, than taking the, you know, taking the offer on the quote unquote trigger. And then, you know, and hoping to God that they build afterwards. So um, I bought Google, and at the same time, if you guys remember, at the same time, Amazon started getting, it was right here, Amazon started getting very, very aggressive, right? Started getting very, very aggressive and put up a $3 candle. So I even said it, I go, it's just a matter of time, it's a matter of time. So Google got above that uh, 88. Uh, 8850 level, right? It got above that 8850 level. So I was just watching it. I was just watching. It. I was like, oh my God, it just, it's like the spread is wide. It was, the spread was like 8830 by 8870. You guys remember that? It was like 8830 by 8870. And I was like, oh God, I just need some, you know, I, I need some buyers to come in. Finally, a buyer came in. Uh, finally, a buyer came in, not big size. I think he came in like 600 to 700 shares. I know this doesn't sound like a lot, but for Google, you know, to see a 500, 600 share bid, it's kind of like seeing, 2000 on Tesla. So he came in at seven, he came in at 53, 54 cents and he stood there for like 30, 40 seconds, which wasn't a lot. So I took some stock. I think it was, I took some stock around 73 cents, uh, something like that. 
uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Um, I took some stock. Yeah, my initial. So I took some stock at 83 cents, but I wanted to see a little bit more confirmation. Um, yeah, so I took some stock at 83, uh, 73 cents. I wanted to see some more confirmation. And then there was an 1100 offer there. You guys remember there was an 1100 offer at, at 88 cents. So I was just watching it, watching it. Once they started building, uh, once they started building over that 88 cent level and they, they went like 60, 65 cent bid, I said, it's, you know, it's pretty much now and never. So I added it through that uh, 88 cents and the stock exploded. I mean, the stock really, really exploded. Uh, and that was kind of my, you know, that was kind of my, you know, that my, my nut for the day. Um, I, I, I kind of, I knew it was going to get, I, ha, I knew it had a shot, shot to get to like 94, 95. Uh, so my last sale was at 993. I call it like a foreign change runner on that trade. I was pretty pleased about it. Uh, considering I didn't think, uh, I didn't think I was going to do a lot more, uh, throughout the day. I was just so, so tired. So I made some money on the video. I had a good trade on Google. Very good, very, very good week, uh, in general. Uh, but the trade that I missed that a lot of you guys caught, uh, I know Vinny caught this trade. I think it was from, what was the, guys, what was the, uh, the options? What was the options on the, on Tesla? Charlie, what was the options on Tesla? The, the, the not the 35750, uh, the 35750 calls, right? The 35750 calls, I believe. 35750 calls. So here is the pivot on Tesla. And we joke around, you know, we joke around this uh, in the room. Uh, 375, was it 37550? Right, 37550, right. So it was, right, right, 37550, right. So we joke around uh, all the time. It's, it's actually not even getting to be a joke. It's actually starting to get pretty scary how, uh, how right it is. So we, we joke around that every single time I walk my dog, and I have a poodle for those of you guys who don't know, uh, every single time that I walk my dog, I miss an explosion in Tesla. I, it's, just, it's just amazing. Uh, it really is amazing. Uh, as much as I've I've caught Tesla, I caught Tesla pretty weak, uh, pretty good this week. Uh, but as much as I hit Tesla, there's a lot of trades when I walk my dog because my you know how, how dogs are, they're pretty regular. So you can't really you know you can't really um, um, you know put them to the side. You're pissing crap all over your house. So um, I took my dog out for a walk and we said, hey guys, watch the 355, right? Watch the 355 pivot right here. Here is the th 354 90 area. Uh, watch again. This is the highest level into supply. This candle confirmed it, and next thing I know, I come back and Tesla is three dollars higher. I mean, three dollars higher. Uh, again, congratulations to you guys who did catch the trade. Neil, right? You caught it for three points. Three points. I know Neil caught it for three points. I know Charlie. You, you, yeah, yeah. Three, whatever it was. Three, whatever it was. Three, the three fifty-five. I know Charlie caught it insane. I think Vinny bought. The, I, I think he bought the calls went from Charlie. Where did the calls go from? Go go from the, the three fifty seven fifty. I think he bought them for like fifteen cents, right? Was it fifteen cents or what the hell? I, I know it was some crazy crazy amount. It was like it went from like fifteen cents to like a dot. Whatever, whatever the hell it was, uh, it was just an, an absolutely amazing move. Twenty. What is it? Twenty nine cents. Right. Twenty nine cents to a dollar thirty. Right. You got from twenty nine cents to a dollar thirty, just a six sick move, six sick move. So uh, my poodle unfortunately costed me a really huge trade uh, on Tesla at the end of the week, but you know it is what it is. It is what it is. So uh, you know just a really, really yeah, Vinny did from sixteen cents to a dollar sixteen. I mean just an absolute sick move. So uh, just a phenomenal move, phenomenal move. Great, uh, great week, uh, great week. If I wasn't exhausted and I didn't have a poodle. I probably would have had a, just an absolute monster day on this Tesla, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, hopefully you guys did very, very well. Uh, hopefully you guys did very, very well. Um, the most important part before we get into uh, what we came here for, uh, the most important part uh, going into next week, again, short memory, guys. There's, there's an old adage in trading that says, uh, you know, if you have a very bad week or a very, very bad trading day, uh, you have to have a short memory. It's like Mariana Rivera, the greatest uh, closer of all time. Uh, which is kind of a horrible reference in baseball yesterday because my Yankees blew a. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway. So moral of the story is, uh, yeah, you got to have a short memory. Uh, not only you know, not only when you're uh, losing money, you have to have a short memory when you're making money because uh, the market will humble you very, very quickly. And you know, I've been saying this for years and years and years. I don't believe in the whole theory, social media theory that people sit there and have fun. I've never had fun. I, I had an incredible week. There's nothing about trading that's fun. 
It's completely a job. It's completely uh, something that uh, we take very, very seriously. Listen, if you're trading 50 shares of a $2 stock and it goes from 2 to 2.30, then maybe you are having fun because you're so shocked you're making money. When you're trading risk and you're trading, uh, you're trading, um, you know, you're trading, you know, real capital and you're trading uh, market sensitive vehicles, you got to be very, very serious. Um, be very, very diligent uh, with your money and be very, very patient. So uh, as much as social media likes to have fun, uh, I like to uh, keep my money very, very safe. And we always put the theory of uh, lead with your chin, joking, lead with your shield, not with your chin. So let's get into uh, how we structure a trading day for the next day. Um, I use eSignal, as you guys know, uh, I use eSignal for... Uh, my charting. Uh, I use my e-signal for my intraday charting, uh, for my real charting. Uh, this is the old version of e-signal. I know a lot of you guys use the new version of e-signal. I haven't upgraded it since. Da, 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 da. Uh, let me see where am I? Uh, help, right? I haven't upgraded since 2000 and uh, where am I? 2010. Okay, so we're going almost eight years. I haven't upgraded. That's why prehistoric Dan is in full effect. I don't upgrade anything. That's right, baby. I don't upgrade anything. Old school. That's how I roll. So I use uh, eSignal uh, intraday, uh, you know, throughout the trading day. I love using uh, TC2000. Um, I do love using TC2000 uh, for, my, um, for my charting. And the reason why I use it for my charting, they have a really, really good, um, they have a really, really, that's right, Vintage Dan. Uh, they have a really, really good feature, and it's called the Space Bars feature. Why it's great about it, I can go through a whole bunch of charts very, very quickly, very, very fast. Uh, I only use TC2000 strictly for my charting at night. There's nothing about it else I use. Uh, I just like it. It's like 25 bucks a month, whatever it is. Uh, I just use it after the close. Um, you know, I, I think structurally you have to... Uh, you have to put yourself in a position to, uh, you know, make sure that your foundation is straight. So get a good charting package, get a several charting packages. Uh, again, as we always talk about in the room, get yourself a very, very good clearance deal. There's absolutely no reason at this day and age that you should be paying more than $2 a trade if you are a retail trader. It's ridiculous. I hear still see people talking about, I pay $8 a trade, $9 a trade, $10 a trade. This is in 1991. I mean, this is, this is clearance is free, guys. And especially all you guys at home, if you're paying four, five, six, seven, eight dollars $8 a trade, go to your broker, say, look, I'm leaving. If you don't structure my deal under two bucks, if you're paying a, if you're paying a dollar a contract on options, you're out of your mind. You can get a clearance rate, 25, 30 cents. Uh, call your broker, call other brokers, get your ducks in a row, get your structure uh, in order. But let's talk about, uh, let's talk about structuring um, a list, an active trading list uh, for the next day. And what I do is I don't believe in the whole theory of the watch list, okay? Just think about the theory of watch list. I see people all over social media. And again, I'm referencing social media because that's the only common denominator a lot of you guys and myself have. I mean, I've been trading uh, since 98, 99 in generic trading. Again, you can Google the hell out of us. We were in Flash Boys. Uh, I got mentored by the great, one of the top three greatest traders of all time in the prop industry. Uh, turned out to be a pretty good friend of mine who unfortunately passed away uh, just this year. So, you know, God, rest, uh, God bless the dead. But, 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 you know, the only common denominator that we do have is social media. So it is what it is. Um, so when I talk about structuring an active trading um, guideline for myself, I don't look at it as a watch list. Everybody has a watch list. You can go on social media, stock twits, Google, uh, Facebook, uh, stock twits, Twitter. Everybody has a watch list. And the problem is they're watching stocks. They're not trading stocks. Um, I try to give myself three to five ideas for the day for the next day that will give me the biggest bang for my buck. So what I don't do is go up here, right? So TC2000, you can go up here and say, wow, look at this, RNVA up 25,000%, ALQA up 9,000%, all right, great. Let the kid with the $2,000 account trying to make 30, 30 bucks for the day. Again, no, no disrespect to anybody, this is just not my thing, I couldn't care less if CCCCCCCL is up 900% or it doesn't exist anymore. It's just not what I do. Again, the structure of entertaining your next day um, business is putting something that you can trade, that the momentum is not there. Technical analysis makes momentum. Momentum doesn't 
you don't chase momentum. You chase a structure that will activate momentum organically. So I don't care about these stocks. They don't do anything for me. God bless. If you're long a stock that's up you know, 900% for the day and you're still long it, I wish you all the best in the world. It's just not for me. And, you know, for every man's trash is another man's treasure. And for me, well, this is just trash. Um, so what do I do? Okay, number one, before any single trading day, we need to have an opinion, right guys? We need to have an opinion. The greatest motivator for having an opinion, right? The absolute greatest motivator for having an opinion is having your eyeballs checked, right? That's the greatest tool you have. If you look at a chart in the S&P 500, right? Well, is the market going up or down? Well, looks like it's going up. See, your indicator is working already. You look at the, you know, you look at the QQQs. Is the market going up or down? Well, looks like it's going up. So you have to have an opinion, right? You have to have an opinion and you have to have a couple of eyes to get you to the point of you have to have a bias which way the market's going to go. The market, not your setups, the market. So you at least you have an understanding which way sentiment is going to flow. The next thing you should say to yourself, what kind of trader am I? Okay, do I trade small caps? Do I trade, you know, do I trade banks? Do I trade technology? What do I trade? For me, I trade primarily uh, fangs, right? Beta names. So I trade uh, Google, Amazon, Tesla, Netflix, Apple, Baidu, NVIDIA, BABA. Once in a while, if I, you know, if I have, a, if I have a extra good pills for the next day, I, you know, I may well trade Facebook. But moral of the story is you have to know what kind of trader are you. Are you a day trader? Are you a scalper? Are you a um, you know, swing trader? Do you trade options? Do you trade crypto? The hell is crypto? Do you trade them, right? Do you trade these things? You have to have an opinion what these things are. And after you have an opinion, you're trying to create an actionable trading environment for yourself that you will have the biggest bang for your buck without, okay, without, you know, we're trying to eliminate as much risk as possible. So for the point of having a live webinar and we have different people trading different things, I can't just say, well, guys, just watch Google and Amazon all day, right? That's for me, right? That's for me. So I can't turn around and say, let's just look at Amazon and Google because I know a lot of you guys trade small caps. I know a lot of you guys uh, trade mid caps as well and banks and all that stuff as well. So we try to facilitate everybody with something. And again, just because the stock triggers doesn't mean I'm going to be in it because again, the whole flawed alert service is, is ridiculous because 900 people are following one guy on his methodology of trading, which is stupid because if I have an X amount of dollar account and you have a Y million you know, dollar account, how can you go in with Amazon with me if you have a $5,000 account? What are you gonna buy, uh, one share of Amazon? So my point is the structure stays the same, the philosophy stays the same, the process stays the same. The only thing difference is we're trading what we feel comfortable in trading, not what I feel comfortable in trading. You have to trade what you feel comfortable in trading and that's exactly what we do. So the first thing I do again is get a sentiment. Obviously the sentiment going into this week continues to be bullish, right? But just like every other person on the planet who's been trading for a long time, I know for a fact, right, gravity is real. And any time the market could come back and tap you on the shoulder and next thing you know, da, 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 your money's gone. So we have to make sure we always play devil's advocate and that's the most important thing. So what I try to do is always look at indexes first and kind of get an idea. So obviously S&P 500 going up, bullish. QQQs breaking out, bullish. IWM, now let's talk about the IWM, right? So now we're starting to see something that's called a rolling top, right? So of all my bullishness, allegedly, going into this week, here's a potential kind of um, roadblock. I'm not saying Armageddon. I'm not saying the market's going to go to hell in a handbasket. All I'm saying is the Russell, that, which I believe is the quote unquote market, because there's 2,000 stocks represented, not the Dow 30, that only is 30, representing here as 2,000 stocks will give you a broad range. It looks tired, okay? It looks tired, okay? Not that, again, it's gonna come back to the you know, 135 area. It looks very, very tired. And the one thing I'm able to identify is a rolling top. What's a rolling top? Well, when the market starts, stops going up and the last group is usually the small caps, they start, stop going up. So the moral of the story is you can see this kind of rolling top taking place, right guys? 
you can see this rolling top. So I say to myself, okay, I'm bullish on the market, at least I'm bullish on sentiment, but, right guys, but, this is when we start getting an opinion, but something could be in our way for a potential back test. And I look at the IWM for, sam for example, and I say to myself, well, here is something we should watch for next week. Everybody see this guys? Here is something we should watch for next week for a potential pause, right? For a potential pause in the market. So I'll take a look at the index and I say, okay, the IWM, the last low here was 149.30. Another low here is 149.39. The low on Friday was 149.57. So I say to myself, and now I'll put this on my watch list, right? I'll put this on my watch list, quote unquote watch list, right? The actual trading list. Now I will set an alert for the next trading day and watch IWM. So if it starts building, right? If it starts building below 149.33, well, they're gonna pull their plug, okay? They're gonna pull a plug. Again, I'm not saying they're gonna pull the plug all the way down to 145, but they're gonna at least pull the plug for an actionable back test to this 148.30 level. So the first thing I do, okay, I have an opinion, I have a bias, and here's my first actionable scenario for the next trading day, and I know I'll set an alert, and this is what you guys should be doing live right now, set an alert for next day for that 149.30 breakdown for a possible measured move to the 10 day support of 148.30, so it's a potential dollar move, a potential dollar move in the trade, so we're definitely keeping an eye on that. And then I go through the NASDAQ 100, right? And then I go through the NASDAQ 100 and say, where is my value on the NASDAQ 100, right? Where's my value? And the greatest thing about TC2000, you can go through these things very, very quickly. So here's a chart on AMAP, first chart, right? We're looking for the tightest distribution possible. Right, folks? The longer the distribution, the potential bigger the move. Again, I repeat this. When you're looking at a daily chart, the longer the distribution, the bigger the potential move. And that's what we're looking for for any daily chart. So here's a chart on AMAT. The first stock on the NASDAQ 100, the first, very first name I look at on the NASDAQ 100, had this really, really nice run, nice three-day run. And for the next four days, con con kind of consolidated with lower volume, which is very, very good, which is telling you the sellers are very comfortable at these levels. And now you're saying to yourself, where is my bang for my buck, right? So here's an area where you can trade. So the top of this channel here is 52.63, right? That's the high of this potential three-day run. The stock closed at 52.40. You're buying it above 52.63. So you are risking, because the stock closed at 52.40, you are risking 23 cents for a potential continuation run for the week. Right, guys? We're looking for value. The biggest bang for our buck. Obviously, risking 23 cents or 25 cents on a $50 stock, that's value because if this thing goes, it's going to go. Look at the potential here. Your potential, your future is right here. Look at the three day run Amazon had. So here you are risking 25 cents roughly with slippage for a possible continuation run. That is value. So the first, for the second thing we put on our watch list is AMAT. AMAT by uh, 42, uh, 42, uh, excuse me, 52. Uh, 63 with a stop of 52.40, right? Very, very easy. You go on to the next one, and, and this is what you do. Netflix, as much as Netflix is a big run, I wouldn't put this on the watch list, right? I mean, look, where, where's your advantage? The stock has just run from 177 to one, you know, to literally 200, literally 200. Again, can we trade this thing, for example? Can we trade this thing, for example, intraday on Monday or Tuesday? Sure, off of the 60 minute channel, but this is nothing that I want on a, on a daily chart. It already made its move, right? It already made its move. So I keep on going. VRTX, nothing. AAL, now again, for all you guys, and again, airlines are really not my thing, right? Airlines are really not my thing, but this is a beautiful chart, right? This is a beautiful chart. Again, you're looking for a big initial move, distribution, and confirmation the next day. So here's a chart on American Airlines, had this really, really big move, almost 6% move, consolidated, put in a high of 5167. The stock closed 5130. Again, am I gonna put this on the watch list for me? Yeah, probably not. But look at this chart, guys. For those who do trade airlines, and again, this is why we say to get comfortable in what you do, you're buying this thing above 51.67, your stop is 51.30, you're risking 37 cents for a potential next big move. Again, that's value. You keep on going. TMUS, nothing. Region, okay, region could go. Here's supply, uh, has, a, you know, has a high here, 477. But again, this is the difference between having, quote unquote, a watch list 
or having a tradable alert, a tradable uh, actual day for the next day, actual list for the next day. Again, yeah, I understand that the, the trigger here is 477, but the stock closed at 470. You're telling me I'm going to buy the stock up up seven? Why? Why am I going to buy the stock up at seven? So if the stock closed at 475, 476, that's one thing. You know, you're saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to risk a dollar. But why would you buy the stock the next day up seven, right? Up seven for a potential another, you know, dollar, dollar and a half, two dollar move. Where's your, you know, where's your safety net? So again, good chart. But again, that's the watch list chart. That's not a trading actionable list chart. So you keep on going. NTES coming to supply, nothing. LRCX basing nothing. SWKS, okay, it looks okay, right? It looks okay. Came out of supply, first close out of supply, you know, put in a high of 5507, okay, there's some value there. There's some value there. First close, first close over supply. Again, you're trying to get yourself the biggest bang for your money. So if you want to get long this thing and it looks good for you, you're saying to yourself, okay, Friday's high is 105.07. It closed at 104.96. I'm roughly risking a dime. So if it fails Friday's highs, what am I risking? A dime, 20 cents with, with slippage. So if this is value and this is trade, you, if this is a stock you want to trade, then this is a good risk reward trade. You should put this on your watch list. You keep on going down. Starbucks, nothing. NC, nothing. Baidu, you know, nothing really yet. Mylan, you know, consolidating, but again, you know, it's, it's not really a great trading vehicle. As you can see, it gapped up and put an inverted hammer, which basically tells you it's not a great trading vehicle. Intuit, nothing. Google, big, big run. You know, big, big run. Well, obviously, nothing there on the daily chart. We're going to be looking for 60-minute channels to uh, move. Amazon, again, getting close to the top of supply. So nothing daily. And you keep on going through these lists, right? You keep on going through these lists. There's only 100 of these things, right? There's only 100 stocks. Right? There are only hundreds of them, guys. It shouldn't take you, it shouldn't take you any more. If you're doing this, you know, very, you know, if you're doing this on your own, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take you any more than five minutes. Again, being a parent, and a lot of you guys will appreciate this, we don't have a lot of time. You know, we have to get a very, very good process very quickly and, and make sure it's it's smart for the next trading session. So here's a trade, you know, here's a trade we put in early in the week. Uh, you know, if you guys remember, here's a trade we put earlier in the week. Uh, Cintas, right? Like here's a perfect scenario. Cintas we put earlier in the week. It closed at 44.67. Uh, 44 and we said buy this thing at 45, yada, yada, yada. The stock's at 49. So you're looking for value. But right now there's nothing in the trade. And you keep on going. Raw stores, Xilinx, nothing there. Semantic, nothing there. Checkpoint, nothing there. And you keep on going, right? You keep on going. You keep on going until you see something incredibly tight right? Like price line, again, beautiful move from Friday's, uh, from Thursday's watch list. Uh, 1895 break, look at the stock, 1922. Again, that's value. Why was this thing on our watch list, right guys? Why was this on the watch list? First close over supply. And the next day when it closed, when it confirmed supply, well, it started a, a, a kind of a unicorn effect. So, so you're looking for any stocks that are closing over supply. So Tesla, right? The most hated stock on the planet. Look, we obviously know, look, we obviously know the stock is strong. We know the stock is strong. And when the stock got weak, we were shorting this thing on the short side. So we have no bias. I don't care. Again, again, if you look at social media, the stock's either going to 5,000 on Monday or it's going to 50 bucks. There's so much emotional baggage in the stock. I just don't understand why people are so emotionally committed to the stock. It doesn't matter, guys. Our opinions don't matter. Follow the price action in the chart. Follow the chart. Why do you care what this company does with their rollout production, if they're going to be early, if they're going to be late? I couldn't care. It doesn't matter. Price action pays. Our opinion doesn't matter. But from the point of emphasis, we are looking for a 60 bid. So again, is this a chart that we're going to put actively on our watch list for, for, for the next day? No, we're not. But the point is we're going to be trading it intraday. We know that. We're going to be trading this on 60-minute channel. But for the daily part, there's nothing for a $4 move for a continuation move, only for a 60-minute confirmation. So we move on, right? BMRN, nothing. ADSK, nothing. PayPal, nothing. WDC, nothing. So here, so we get to the video. Right? We get to the video, right? Again, the whole point of a structural balance to give yourself a chance with the biggest bang for your buck is giving a longer distribution the bigger the move. So here's the video. One, two, three, four, five days this is a full week. The top of the channel here is 190, uh, 181.98, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, 191.88, okay? So 82. So we know this thing needs to take out 82. We know this, okay? So this will be on the watch list. Why? Because your risk here is 70 cents. 
You're buying it through 182 with a potential move to the top of the channel here, especially if you're swinging it to almost 189, right? Excuse me, actually above 189 with a risk of 70 cents, right? So you're talking about risking 70 cents for a potential $7 move. For your option players, you should be salivating on something like this, right? You should be absolutely salivating for something like this. So you, you have a great risk reward, you have a great range, and oh, by the way, it's a very, very emotionally charged beta name. So we have all the elements for potential move, so we put that on our watch list. So now we have three really good value plays for Monday. We got the video. We got AMAT and we got the IWM for a potential back test if it gets tired. So you move on. You have three. You want to get yourself six or seven, right? So you go microchip, nothing, LBTY, nothing, Qualcomm, nothing, JD, nothing, ATVI, nothing, Intel, magnificent run. Again, what are you going to do with the nosebleed section? The stock broke out at $36. The stock's at 40. What are you going to do with Intel? Okay, what are you going to do with Intel there? And you keep on going, guys, until you see structural balance. Now, look, BIIB looks good right? BIIB looks really, really good. So the top of this channel here, guys, the top of this channel is 331. Okay. The top of this channel here is 331. If it confirms 331, this thing is going again for all you option players, get your ducks in a row, but this looks great for next week. So we want to put it on our actionable trading environment. So 331 break on BIIB. Again, we're looking for value guys. We continue, right? Maxim, nothing, Fox, nothing, MDLZ, Microsoft. Microsoft looks good, but it's more of an investment vehicle than a trading vehicle. CSX, fast, ADI, LBTY, monster, nothing, CERN, nothing, Apple just can't get out of its way yet. Mattel, ADP, KHC, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we're done, right? So we're done with the NASDAQ 100. So then what I like to do is look at the IWM, right? I like to look at the IWM and I say to myself, okay, we know now, we have an opinion on IWM, we know the daily potential pivot is 49.33. Do I really want to get aggressive with these stocks? I mean, when I say I, I mean generally, right? I'm not, again, I'm not trading any $2 stocks right now. Uh, at least I don't want to. I've had some success with these things. I'm still holding a third of my position of that CLDX. But my point is, do I really want to put a lot of emphasis when I know the market structure is highlighting beta? For me, no. But for you guys, again, because everybody trades differently, trades different vehicles, you want to get yourself a sense. So again, you click on this little toolbar on, on TC2000. I, again, I think this is a great... Uh, 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 I think this is a really great uh, uh, charting package. To, you can go through these charts very, very quickly. And you go down the list and you're looking for exactly the same thing. Where is the value, right? Where is the value, guys? Where is the value on, you know, where is the value on these smaller cap names, right? And you're trying to go through the whole list as fast as you can. And the most important part, not only are you trying to go as fast as you can, your, tr your eyeball tests are giving you, a, you already know what you're looking for. You're looking for the longest distribution with the absolute tightest risk. So you keep on going. So look, I come across the stock Dova. I don't know what this Dova is. I've never heard of Dova, but I look, I say, well, okay, look, there's a 7 million share float. There's a long distribution, right? There's a long distribution. Again, is this something that I'm going to trade? You know, probably not, right? Probably not, but I know a lot of people will. So this looks really, really good. So I look at the top of the channel and I say, okay, the top of this channel here is 28 and a quarter. Uh, yeah, 28 and a quarter here. It stopped at 27.85. So for all you guys who are trading these little, you know, smaller cap names, you know, biotech names, keep an eye on this. Again, is this something for me? Probably not. But again, I'll put it on the watch list because look how long the distribution is. The distribution is almost two months. So if this thing gets above this 28, you know, 28 and a quarter area, right? This thing gets above the 28 and a quarter area, this thing can go, right? This thing can go. So you want to keep an eye on that as well. And you keep on going through the list, right? You keep on going through the list until you get five or six really, really solid ideas. Really, really solid ideas that are not overextended, that nobody's looking at, that nobody's in. Because again, remember, at the end of the day, if, 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 if the theory is 90% of all the traders are losing money, why would you want to be in the same trade with them? And the reason why a lot of these non-correlated non-correlated nine betting names work, because nobody is in these things. You guys remember this ARLZ, right? You guys remember this ARLZ? This is something we put on the watch list, okay? A $2. Nobody on social media talked about this for five days. By the time they talked about this, this thing went from two to, to three. And the reason why two for three, it was organic order flow, right? 
organic order flow. It wasn't some guy on social media go, this is the next one to go, man. Yeah, this one, the next one to go for three cents. But the reason why I went from two to three is or, 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 or organic order flow. So you want to make sure you're in the stocks and nobody is in. And that's why you're giving yourself the biggest bang for your buck. So you continue, right? You continue. And you say to yourself, where is my next value, right? Where's my next value? Again, majority of the stocks are not tradable. Okay, majority of the stocks are not tradable. They're never going to be tradable. But again, if you're an uneducated trader and nobody's ever told you that, how are you possibly going to understand that, right? How are you possibly going, going to understand the majority of the names are not tradable? So what I like to do, I have this kind of filter set up. I used to use it. And when I can't find a lot of value, I'll go to this little, um, little filter that one of our uh, members made me about uh, uh, 2012. Wow, so this is six years ago. Uh, nearly six years ago. And these are stocks that are trying to confirm the channels. And what I'll do this for all you guys who have TC2000, I'm more than happy to uh, give it to you. So I go through these charts uh, very quickly and I want to see if there's any value, anything that's confirming. A lot of these stocks are going to be smaller cap names. But again, if you're trading the smaller cap names, you know, you're going to want to do this. So I come across ENVA. Again, look at the distribution, guys. Again, the longer the distribution, the bigger the move. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 days in a row. You have three weeks. Three weeks of distribution. This goes on the watch list. A break of $14 with 15 cents stop. ENVA. Again, look at the potential move, guys. This ENVA put in a move of 12.5%. If you get another 12.5% candle, you're going to have a very, very big move. So you're only risking uh, roughly 15 cents in the trade. So keep an eye on ENVA and you keep going. You know, you keep going until you see something very, very tight with the least amount of congestion, with the least amount of supply over and over and over again. Some days you'll find 20 stocks, some days you'll find three stocks. But again, you want to get yourself an opportunity that you are risking the least amount of money. Okay, the least amount of money with to get the biggest bang for your buck, this biggest liquidity for your buck, and you keep on rinsing and repeating. So you keep on going through the list until you find the next one. So far, nothing really seems really that great. As you can see, this is why uh, I believe the IWM could take a rest, especially if it cracks that 149.30s uh, level. You can see by the, how these stocks are reacting. They're not coming, they're failing to come out of these ranges. So you keep on going, you keep on going, you keep on going until you finally get something that you feel very, very comfortable. And so far, I don't see that, but you can see how you know they're starting to get worse and worse, these charts, right? They're starting to get worse and worse. Uh, EMKR, if test, you know, you go very, very quickly. A lot of these things are just well underneath supply and they have no areas of interest uh, to trade these things whatsoever. And that's what it looks like right now. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. And then you just go, your last thing you do, you can see here, not a lot of value. Not a lot of value whatsoever. As we're getting even closer to the bottom of this list, you can see very, very limit, limited value there. And again, you don't force it. You go through, you know, you go through all your charts. Uh, you start looking quick, quick run of the S&P 500, very, very quick. Again, I'm not, I don't trade majority of stocks in the S&P 500, but you'll go on some, you know, you go on a quick move on the S&P 500 as well to see if there's any good value. AMAT, we already put on our chart. Um, BXP, AAL, UAL, region, we talked about that. Uh, you do just do a quick run. You just do a quick run. A lot of these stocks are very, very overextended. Um, so you don't force things. You definitely, definitely don't force things. And that's about it. So that, that's the value that I'm seeing so far. Uh, that's the value so far I'm seeing uh, in our watch list. So we got six value plays on our watch list and everything else we're going to be trading off uh, the 60 minute channel. So kind of what you want to do is, and again, I, I, I would advise everybody to do so. Get TC2000. It's like 20 bucks a month, man. It's like 20, 25 bucks a month. Uh, if you're looking for, you know, if you're looking for a manual way to chart for everything, I don't believe in the whole scan thing because I'm going to miss a lot of things. Um, I like to go through all these charts very, you know, I, li I like to go through all these charts very organically. Uh, KMX 7760. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe in the whole let, let the computer, you know, let the computer do the, the work for me. I'm a very hands on uh, with my um, idea. Uh, you know, generating. So it's very well. What did I, what did I not like about this one? F L I R, F I L I R, uh, 50, 41, 46, 51. Yeah, it's not bad. Guys, also look at look at F L I R. Okay, look at F L I R for uh, this week. Uh, F L I R. Uh, you're buying it through uh, 4150, right? 4150. You're buying it. Your stop is 4129. Again, nice tight pattern uh, for a possible move up. So again, 
that is your value. So I look at my watch list for, I, I look at my watch list for uh, tomorrow's, for Monday's session. I got NVIDIA. I know it's a name that I'm definitely gonna trade if it starts uh, violating the top of that channel. Again, you have a 70 cent risk for a possible move to the 189 level. You have your IWM set up potentially for the week. You have this rounding top. And again, if all you guys in the room know, I'm pretty good at these rounding tops. Uh, this thing violates the 149.30 level, especially for your option players. You could get a back test, initial back test uh, to 148.30. So that's a dollar move there. A dollar move in, in the ETFs are very, very big. You have to trade these things with bigger size. So I like this chart right here. Uh, AMAT looks really, really good as well. Uh, keep an eye on AMAT, guys. Again, you have a three-day monster run consolidation. If this thing gets above the 52.63 area, you possibly have a move to the upper Bollinger Band, so good potential there uh, as well. Uh, BIIB, again, flagging. This thing looks ready to go. 3.31 break for your option players. I think it's a better option play than an equity play. Uh, DOVA. For all you guys who are trading non-beta, again, good long distribution, a break above 28, uh, 28 and a quarter can get this thing going here. So keep an eye on that. ENVA, big long distribution as well. You can see the big long distribution as well here. Uh, nice long, big move uh, potential, $14 break, 15 cent stop. And the last one is FLIR. Again, you have a nice tight candle here, nice tight flag. Um, Ready to go, ready to go. You have a 4150 break with a uh, 4150 break with a potential stop of 4129. So you're risking literally 20 cents for a potential move. Okay, guys. So that's that's basically it. It's not a lot of surgery. It's not a lot of brain surgery. Uh, you're trying to save as much time as you possibly can. Okay, and you're trying to get the biggest value, biggest bang for your buck that you're actually going to trade the next day, not that you're going to watch. So the theory of the watch list compared to the active trading uh, scenario for the next day is night and day. Okay, guys, so we'll open it up for, about, for questions for about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll let you guys uh, go on to your uh, weekend. Start it up, guys. Who's first? Okay, so the first question comes from Charlie, and he asks, could you be, maybe get a little more specific on characteristics you're looking for in charts? Well, the number one thing we know based on the PS60 theory we know that stocks trade from supply to supply, correct? Uh, we, we know stocks trade from supply to supply. We know that, right, Charlie? We know that. There's, there's, there's no, there, there, so we're trying to put on, if we're trading off the daily chart, we're trying to put on a chart that has the biggest, for example, potential going to the next supply zone, right? To the next supply zone with the limited amount of risk. So for example, like for example, you trade a lot of beta. Right? That's all you trade, you trade beta. So you know, we all know that the next supply zone on NVIDIA is this right here, right Charlie? We know the next supply on NVIDIA is right over here, correct? We know the next, the next thing is right over here. So we know the distance between the entry and the upper Bollinger Band is $7, right? $7. So based on the theory of characteristics, we're looking for something that has the biggest move potential, right? The absolute biggest move potential. Again, if you believe in the theory that stocks go from supply to supply and demand to demand, so the next supply zone is nearly seven, eight dollars higher, and your risk is thirty, and your risk is seventy cents. So you're risking seventy cents for a seven dollar potential move. That's value. So the biggest characteristic that we're using is the biggest distance between entry to supply if we're going long and entry to demand if we're going short and obviously having the, the biggest defined risk. So that's the, that's the biggest thing. So FLIR is different, you know, FLIR is different. I, you know, look, I, I don't know what this FLIR is, right? So for example, that's why I say for myself, I can't tell you how high the stock can get. You'd have to kind of play around with it, go on the weekly chart, you know, go on the yearly chart to see where the next potential move can be. I try to keep it very, very, unsophisticated. Okay. As you guys know, I try to keep things very, very unsophisticated for myself. So for me, I wouldn't trade this. I like the chart. Maybe somebody else wants to trade this, but I, I, I have zero interest in this thing. You know me, I have zero interest in this thing. So for me, I'd rather get a defined look. So for example, on Friday, right on Friday, I knew that Google was going to potentially trade to 94, 95 because there was an upper Bollinger band there. Correct. There was an upper Bollinger band there. So I had my point of reference. 
So I knew I was going to risk either a dollar on the trade or I was going to make about four or five bucks on the trade. That's exactly what happened. So the big, biggest characteristic for me is, number one, I have to know the stock. I have to be familiar with the stock. I have to know I could get out of the stock. So that, that's why liquidity plays an incredibly big part of it. And the most important part for me is I, I, know, I have to understand the, the, the technical traits that the stock has. So I have to know how the stock can trade, build, and partly my profits um, for, the next, you know, for the next move. So that's kind of what, what I look for. Okay, Charlie? So that's kind of, that's kind of what I look for. Do I have do I have a defined do I have a next question comes from Calgary. Do I have a defined dollar risk? Well, you've been in the room now for a week. <laughs> right? Right, Talget? You've been in the room for a week. Okay. You know I don't like risk. Right? I don't like risk. But when you're trading these stocks, you've got to put in risk. So for example, okay, for example, when I put on the trade on Google on Friday. I knew my upside was $5. I knew my downside, if it failed to pivot, was either going to be a break-even trade or a dollar maximum. So my, you know, so my answer to that is, I fight time. I fight order flow. So if I know a stock doesn't build over that level within the first two minutes, I'll get out of the trade. So why risk anything if you could risk nothing? Correct? And that's kind of a, the whole point of the PS60 theory. We're not fighting a price set, we're fighting time. So if the stock doesn't build properly over that pivot or build below properly over that pivot, I'm going to be out of the trade. And worst case scenario, I will just buy it back at a higher price once it confirms the initial move. So we don't need to risk any money. If you guys notice, my three trades from Friday, right? I broke even on Alibaba. I made 25, 30 cents on the video when it stalled, break even on the balance. And I made five dollars. I made four four dollars and change on Google. So what is what is the common denominator? The common denominator is once the first two stocks didn't build, I was out. Right? I didn't need to have Baba go a dollar against me to 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 validate what I'm doing. Why put on risk if you don't have to? Right? Why put on risk if you don't have to? You don't need to. If the stock doesn't build over that area, you're out. That's it. You're out. So you you don't. We don't need to risk anything. Right, Talget? If you saw my Alibaba trade, it spiked up 25 cents. That's it. And once it stalled out, I used break even. The stock went down a dollar. I bought NVIDIA, right? Only ran up 25, 30 cents. I, you know, I just took some cash flow just to make some cash flow. It stalled out there. I got, I, I, I got stopped out the balance break even. But Google pivoted. Google pivoted right away and Google, Google exploded for, you know, four and a half, five dollars. So my point is, why put on, why expose ourselves to risk if you don't have to? Right? No reason to. No reason to put on risk if you don't have to. Um, let's see here. Um, next question comes from Will, and we'll only take a couple more questions after this, guys, because I'm going to be late to my, uh, my son's soccer game. Um, please explain to us, spring chicken traders, the physical process of walking us through a whole number trade to hit the bid versus a pilot. No, no. Yeah, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. So the greatest, the, the biggest... The biggest value, okay, the biggest value for me is always at whole numbers, right? If you guys noticed, if you guys noticed, liquidity is always at the greatest points, okay? Liquidity is always at the greatest points through whole numbers, okay? Through whole numbers. That's the bottom line. You'll have you, you retail there, you have institutions there, you have everybody there because, again, the whole number for whatever reason mentally uh, is the stop and go, okay? So... If I'm looking at a trade and the pivot is, say, for example, 848.86, I will wait to that whole number because I, I want to see them build off that 86. I, I know the biggest bang for my buck will come off that whole number. Okay, it will come off that whole number. Um, and if it doesn't go through that whole number, if it doesn't, if, if, they, if they reclaim, if the sellers reclaim the pivot, you got to be out of the trade. So if it starts building right away, you know the stock's going to go, okay? Right. The biggest liquidity is always going to be at the whole number. So I will be more aggressive taking size and liquidity on the whole number than I will uh, in a trade that's in the middle, <clears throat> in the middle of, its, if it, if it's, of its number. Um, and I know if a stock builds right away off the whole number, it's going to go. I mean, look what happened to Tesla yesterday. Excuse me, forget about Tesla. Look what happened with Google yesterday. Once Google started building, right? Once Google started building on a whole number, think about that. 
once Google started building on a whole number yesterday, look what happened. Stock went up four and a half dollars straight up, right? I was even joking around. I go, I'm, I'm, I'm making sales on this thing every dollar, you know, every dollar up in, in matter of seconds. So it's very, very important on a whole number. Okay. It's very, very, very important on a whole number. But we also know if a stock stalls on that whole number, okay, if the stock stalls on that whole number, you got to get out of the trade. At least I got to get out of the trade. I don't, there's no reason for me to lose a dollar, two dollars on Tesla. There's no reason to. I could just break even or lose, you know, 20, 30 cents and go on my, you know, go on my day, then, you know, catch a, you know, catch a bullet. So that, that's kind of the importance of it. Yeah, just to, just to answer uh, Talgett's question, um, yeah, the Bollinger Band will always be the area, will always be the area where stock uh, emotionally, oops, excuse me, uh, it, it, that's the area where you're going to have the biggest emotional buyers and technical sellers. So if you see, for example, here, look where Amazon stopped, right? Look what Amazon stopped at supply. Look what Google stopped at supply. Look what, you know, you can look at net, where, where Netflix stopped. That's supply. It's not, you know, it's not a, it's not an accident. They stop at supply. So yeah, absolutely. We're going to take one last question from Brendan and then I really got to get to my uh, son's soccer game. It actually starts in 10 minutes. So I got, I actually got to get out of here. Uh, regarding re-entry, if I entered a whole number break and the stock goes to 120 and retrace the two. Yes. The, the entry would be, yes. The entry would be uh, over that first initial move of $100 and 20 cents. And if it fails that you can use, you can use like a 20 cent risk again if they uh, reclaim the whole number. Uh, again, the, the beautiful part, guys, about having our live webinar, all these questions are answered five, you know, five days a week, seven hours a day. Okay, guys, so anything, anything that we didn't cover today, we'll definitely cover through the week. All right, guys, awesome week this week, guys. Great job. Hopefully, we'll get the continuation action next week. Okay, uh, have a great, great weekend. Uh, this video will be out at some point. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it up. I'll leave it up. The, you know, it will definitely be, uh, the, you guys will get the video within the next probably couple of hours. Uh, I'm going to send this over to uh, Kenyon and Kyler and they'll edit it, all that good stuff, and it'll go out. All right, guys, have a great weekend, everybody, and uh, stay safe. I'll see you guys on Monday. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.